Now, celebrating all things cool in Jacksonville, a local show with a spotlight on the 904 with hosts Eden Kendall and Mark Payton, featuring amazing stories from every neighborhood with Rance Adams. This is River City Live. Welcome to River City Live. It's rainy outside and, I don't know, it kind of puts you in that mood. But we have some useful tips coming up for dogs. You know, when it storms out and it gets really loud, what do you do with them? All right, so here's what my dog does, the Rot Labra Hound, Sophie Jo. When, when it is storming, she will stand. Yes, she's in, allowed in my bed. That's just, <laughs> save, your, save your comment. <laughs> she will stand over my face and drool. Wake me up. Like, I feel like it's raining in my room because I'm getting... Drip, drip, drip. So we have the whole, well, I, rather than tell you what we do, Rance, rather than you tell what you do with NOLA, why don't we tell you that coming up in the show, our friend Dr. Mike from Sixth Street Vet joins us and we'll be giving you some tips, not just for thunderstorms, but for fireworks, those kinds of things if your dogs get nervous. I feel like what we have to have lined up in the not too distant future is what to do with kids they when the storms it. come in. Because they get like amped up and they just start to act out and they, just turn savage. I don't know. Maybe it's just my voice. It, it is true. Yeah. But I, I, when did we get to an age? Because like now I'm at an age when I hear rain, I'm like Netflix and chill. I mean, <laughs> when do we get to? Do the kids get when to that? When you love stage? rain. Yeah. When you love rain. When you come up with enough fun things for them to do, that's when they love it. Oh, well, when, when they start really getting charged up, hey, you got all that energy, why don't you run that vacuum I, over there or scrub it? I um, feel uh, a segment coming up. <laughs> We're going to drop off our kids, Eden's house, when it's raining, <laughs> and you just keep them entertained, that's and you fine. capture that magic. That's How's fine. That? I have noise-canceling headphones. <laughs> and a teenage daughter who babysits. Yeah. I, I picture that. Mind. Your headphones, a glass of wine, <laughs> and you leave the kids alone. I mean, exactly. We need to do like a, one of those uh, with a timeline and it's just Eden sitting there with her headphones on, sipping, and all the kids are running, ah, ah, and she's just well, sitting there calm as day. Well, see, now that the girl child, she does babysit, but now she also works in a restaurant, so I'm oftentimes like, you worked in a restaurant? How would I refill this? <laughs> How would I go about that? So smooth. So slick. I'm helping you with your training. <laughs> We just got off the weekend, and then, you know, on Monday, I feel like I always go back out to the grocery store to pick up all the items that I didn't pick up over the weekend, which I should have. Mm. And we have a list that we found that will help you to be more organized to your approach to grocery shopping, but will also save you money. And there's eight tips, basically, and for the most part, I do not follow any of these. <laughs> and I have to start because... I really, I don't have a system in play, if you will. Well, you will save money if you follow these tips. And these are more mistakes that you make, but by correcting these mistakes, you can save, like, not keeping track of what you buy. So how many salts do you have in your... We have butter that we'll buy when we're not out of butter, things like that. So I think every family has that one item that everybody picks up when they're yeah. in the store because they think they're out of it. And I think the idea is you do create a list, and most of us have a list, but the grocery store... They are geniuses at what they do. So while you're walking to find the one, you look yeah. over you're like, I can use this too as well. Oh, grab that. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So I guess the thing is create a list, but stick to the list would probably mm -hmm. be. That's the hard part. Yeah. But then, I mean, with the advent of cell phones now is you can always text like, hey, do we have this? But the stores have become genius in that because half the time I can't get a signal when I'm in the store. Oh, I never thought about that being some kind of conspiracy. I don't know, but I'm going <laughs> they, there. No, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. they just like, yeah. They, they just knock, knock it out. I mean, seriously, you get into the store, you're like, oh, I'm trying to text, and you walk away. I still haven't heard, and you just see message still sending. <laughs> oh, yeah. Better buy it anyway. <laughs> now, another one on the list, which is kind of interesting, if you have frequent or unwanted house guests, because really what happens is you're feeding a lot more than just your family. Of course. So try to cut back on that if you can. If you could do quality control or damage control, you know, uh, figure out Wait, either so what to buy them. Or are you saying, like, bar people from coming to hang out at your house? I feel like there's got to be an approach to it because sometimes what will happen, if we have people coming over, we'll buy way more than we actually mm -hmm. need to oh, okay, buy okay. for them, especially if people coming out of town. What about the day-to-day? -day? Like, okay, so you got the boys. As they get older, their friends are probably going to want to come by. I mean, you probably dealt with it. I was notorious growing up. It's like... I'm going to their house, and every day it's like, oh, can I check your pantry? And it was like M&Ms and cookies and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So if you've got day-to-day, -day, let's yeah. say inter interlopers. <laughs> well, I, like, so here's like one strategy I have just with my kids, but it also works for guests. 
You know, they're the good apples you buy individually, and then you have your bagged apples. <laughs> so the bagged apples will be pushed forward. Like, here, have some of these bagged apples. It's right? the opposite of the good stuff is for the company. It's like the opposite yeah. of that. Or like you have your name brand soft drinks, and then you have your not name brand soft drinks. Mm -hmm. Those will be pushed to the front. I got you. This is what's on the menu today. I got you. You'll be drinking tap water, <laughs> and here's what you get. Um, the <laughs> Keep count of toilet paper, K-cups, all these things. Ration it off. There's a bar of soap and a toothbrush. So uh, when you're in a rush and you're rushing through the store and you're grabbing things just quickly without really considering the price, I think that's something that we can all relate to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hate when that happens because I've been notorious for, uh, uh, so, you know, you've got like, let's just use Target as an example. You have your cartwheel and all of that. Uh, so you get the Target brand. But one day I got in, I was like, oh, this is cheap. Wasn't paying attention. I got the name brand and I got home. So like, you know how much money you could have saved if you bought this. Sorry, I wasn't thinking. But speaking of cartwheel, and then you were saying how your phone doesn't work, like, I love Target, but a lot of times that app doesn't load. And I'm, like, stressing. <laughs> I'm like, ah! And it won't process. And then I go home, and I was like, did you use cartwheel? Because, you know, you take time to put yes, everything into it. Yes, I So, did. like, I, there might be a conspiracy <laughs> with that, you know, too, as well. Another one on the list, being disorganized. So what this is basically saying is not knowing what you already have in your fridge. So you might say, hey, I have to buy orange juice, but you didn't know it was behind the milk, okay. behind the wine. You know who's tensing up right now? Chris Stone of Neatly Designed is one of our <laughs> guests on the show today, and she recently helped me organize. She went, she, this is probably something that can help you too. She had me get Lazy Susans for my uh, refrigerator. Oh yeah. Ooh, so, for the fridge. For the fridge. Nice, and, okay. Yeah, you can buy them and, and you just twirl them around. She has great ideas. I love it, but my whole philosophy with having the guests, see, then they would spin it and then they'd see the nice stuff in there. Well, <laughs> if you're intentionally hiding stuff, the trick is to remember to unhide it before the shop <laughs> yeah, starts. Right. Uh, nice. Overeating, so yeah. this makes a lot of sense. Stick to a serving size, because if you're not, what happens? You're buying more grocery, and then you're eating more grocery. So that's that, makes that sense. seems kind of elementary. If you're eating too much, your grocery bill might be too <laughs> high. Uh, shopping while hungry. <laughs> Ooh, shopping too that's often. The worst. Sorry, I skipped that one. Shopping oh, yeah. too often and also shopping when you're hungry. Shopping while hungry is horrible. Mm -hmm. And I, I do it all the time because that's why I'm at the grocery store. <laughs> so you don't have food. Mm -hmm. Everything looks good. And you're like, oh, well, we should probably have that and whatever it might be. And then you get home. Why'd you get that? I was thought we needed it. <laughs> it looked delicious. <laughs> In that moment. It looked delicious. How often do you shop, though? Do you are, do you stop in on the regular basis, or so do you just go? We once usually week? do one or two big trips per week, and then we have a couple small trips uh -huh. like, in between. Oh gosh, things. you guys live in a grocery store. We do. Ooh. Yeah, I know we're there quite often. And then when I was growing up, and you know, again, we had a really big family. We would go to a place. I don't even know if they're still in business, like Cub Foods. Mm -hmm. We could buy things. It's kind of like what a Sam's Club is now. We would go there. My mom would go around like one or two in the morning. I know it sounds weird. There's nobody there. We would have about five carts of food. Well, eight so, kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. it was crazy. We'd have like four or five gallons of milk. Did she make sugar. you guys go with her? We we actually liked going, and then we could control the menu. Ah, for what was going on. Nice. But it was actually kind of fun to do, especially late at night because no one else was there. But I mean, we. I bet through. she's good at looking for the deals. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, she and was, and she was fast one. and efficient yeah. at going through. You have to be there. Right, so you know? not looking for deals is uh, the last on that list. Yeah, so I mean, uh, you know, again, you have to have a strategy. You have to plan, mm -hmm. you know. So a lot of it's common sense, but a lot of times common sense is not that common. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that helped you out <laughs> a little bit. I have to, you know, go back to this list again and strategize yeah. like, <laughs> my approach. So when you talk about shopping, believe it or not, Black Friday is only 171 days <laughs> Away. Who's keeping count? Well, I guess you gone. are. It's 201 days to Christmas. I'm just going to throw that one out there. Oh, my gosh. But Walmart, well, Walmart, they are all over it. Well, you, you assume already that Walmart is getting ready as far as trying to figure out what their deals are going to be. You know, everybody knows this stuff doesn't happen overnight. But another thing that has been announced is Walmart is using, using virtual reality <laughs> goggles. You, you've seen these, no doubt. You put them on, and then it's like a real-life scenario. But they're using it for training employees for Black Friday day chaos. So you put these things on and suddenly people are fighting over. You're like, wait, <laughs> that's what I'm looking at. TVs and, you're, you're, and it's just supposed to, I guess, simulate that frantic feeling yeah. that happens on any given Black Friday so that the Walmart employees are better prepared. The thing that's so funny, I was just watching maybe a couple weeks ago, it was on quarterbacks in the NFL. They're using virtual reality to help them with decision making because mm. you have to make decisions within a second of like who's open, uh -huh. what your reads are and stuff like that. And then it's kind of funny because now Walmart's doing this as well. <laughs> it's you know? warfare. So, yeah, yeah, you gotta, you know, it's game time scenario. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a lot of 
stress and chaos happening right in front of you, so you have to be prepared and ready to go. But will they turn it into a video game where you can actually uh, buy it and you are the Walmart employee? Interesting. And you're surrounded by you all You need this. to put that idea down, patent it, Eden, you're getting paid. <laughs> right. I love it. And then what happens when you go to Black Friday? One of the biggest things that you buy. You buy tech stuff. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. And there's a new, they call it a, a miracle material that could help out with your phone. That's what they call it, the miracle material. But I thought that was the same thing when they brought out Gorilla ga Glass. So basically, this material is supposed to protect your phone from ever ever having a cracked screen and we know how prevalent that is i mean mm -hmm. how many of us are all walking around with cracked screens on their phones multiple phones I, riley <laughs> hold it up there oh she got hers fixed all right but yeah so this is a uh, apple is doing their developers conference right now so it's everybody's stuff being released yeah. everybody's tuned into that but this is if they actually make this work, they're going to lose a lot of money on fixes. But it's just something everybody seems, it doesn't matter what kind of case you have, crack screen. Don't you feel like we're kind of late to this party? You figure like this is something <laughs> they should have got on right away. You were talking about, remember when uh, Apple, they made the, the pizza box of the pizza crust? <laughs> yes. It doesn't get soggy. So we have that, but we don't have a nice, reliable, you know, glass that won't crack. Yeah. You know, so it's but about I, time. I, have they... Been holding back on that, you think? That's I mean, what I'm saying. Conspiracy, said, look at you. That's like you just said. There's a lot of money in fixing these broken phones. However, a lot of that may be here. Are you ready? Yes, Everyone get yes, ready. Yes. So I think originally they didn't want you to have bulletproof glass on your phone, but then all of the third party places popped up to fix it. And they're like, well, now everyone's going to take it somewhere else. We may as well make it. Where it doesn't break. I see, and keep it in house. As long Charge as a little it, extra for if that. If someone phone. else is going to be dipping their hands in it, hey, we'll show you. I'm yeah. spending a thousand dollars for a phone. Hook me up. <laughs> so you know. Now, Rance, one of.